Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students welcome to today's lecture in today's lecture we will start discussing about a new problem in quantum mechanics that can be exactly solved if you remember the previous problem that we we'll took up was the particle in a box problem in this in that problem we had the potential energy which was a discontinuous function uh, if you remember we defined the potential energy in the particle in a box as to be zero within the box and infinite outside the box so that means the function was discontinuous at the boundary that was one and the second point is that within the box the potential energy was constant now today in this lecture we will deal with another problem uh, which is harmonic oscillator where the potential energy is actually a continuously varying function of the coordinate when you discuss about uh, harmonic oscillator so the first uh, difference is that uh, here in this problem in this problem the potential energy is continuously varying function the second point that we will discuss is that when we say harmonic oscillator we have often a simple pendulum or a spring in mind suppose let us consider that we have uh, a spring attached to a fixed surface at one end and on the other end we put a load of mass m given the stiffness of the uh, spring we will have an initial length of this spring let us call this x0 suppose i pull this mass downward when i pull this mass downward what you would experience is that there is the, as if there is a force within the spring which is actually pulling the mass upwards if I push this mass upwards instead of pulling it down you would also experience as if there is a force inside the spring which tries to push the mass down. That means in this spring we have an inbuilt force which opposes the external force or in other words which tries to restore the initial configuration of the spring the initial length of the spring. So, that means when you try to elongate this, this is the spring would try to uh, shrink so that it comes back to its original position. When I try to shrink the spring, the spring would try to elongate so that it can come, come back to its original position. So, as if there exists a restoring force uh, in, in this spring. So, the second point that we should uh, keep in mind is that we are dealing with a with system where there exists a restoring force and if you uh, follow this discussion that we uh, had this restoring force is a opposite to the direction of, of, of the displacement. So, therefore, I, am, I can write this equation this minus sign multiplied by x which is which is the uh, dimension along which I am stretching or shrinking the uh, spring. So, this minus x suggests that the restoring force is against or in the opposite direction to the displacement and this k is often a force constant or also called as a spring constant. Depending on the stiffness of the string or whether the string is a uh, spring is stiff or weak the value of this k or the spring constant would, would would change. Now, this restoring force makes this system a, har a harmonic oscillator. How? Suppose you would imagine instead of when I pull this mass downwards and then I release this mass, you would see that this the spring would actually first shrink, it will come back to its original position and the moment it reaches its original or equilibrium position the direction of the force will change and then you see that it will start going uh, it will start shrinking further 
and then again after some times it would come come back to its original position and relax stretch a bit and it will continue this motion. If the spring has no other way to dissipate its energy, you can imagine that this back and forth motion will happen uh, for forever. So, this motion that this back and forth motion is what we call the oscillatory motion that it the system goes goes back to its equilibrium position by by shrinking and and stretch stretching. Now, this harmonic oscillator the, the way we uh, defined uh, this, this problem is, is a nice physical problem, but how does it relate to uh, chemical worlds. One particular thing that we have in, in mind when we discuss harmonic oscillator is that the molecules that we uh, deal with uh, uh, in, in, in chemistry, these molecules at a finite temperature are always under constant some, some sort of vibration. Now, these vibrations uh, by with, with these vibrations the molecules always uh, stretch or shrink along their equilibrium position. So, therefore, molecular vibration is a natural place of application for this harmonic oscillator. Apart from molecular vibration you can also imagine any other system where the system has, a in, has an inbuilt restoring force that brings it back to its equilibrium position all the time. In any such problem, we can use the problem of harmonic oscillator and the solution that we will derive uh, from, from this discussion can also be used in all those problems. One particular example is that when we use, uh, when, we sub, uh, when we expose a molecule in elec external electric field or magnetic field, the molecules, molecular response to these fields can also be treated with a uh, harmonic oscillator problem. Before we start discussing the harmonic oscillator problem in quantum mechanical sense, let us refresh our idea or refresh our knowledge on the classical mechanical solution of harmonic oscillator. Uh, while discussing this classical uh, harmonic oscillator, we would start our discussion with the uh, equation just we wrote down that the restoring force is negative of uh, force constant k into uh, x. The but I know from Newton's equation of motion force is mass into acceleration. So, therefore, I can write and now I have a differential equation I have a second order uh, differential equation uh, for solution I, I uh, already know. I provide a general solution to this differential equation as as a sum of a sine function as a and a cosine function, where this omega I have defined as the square root of k over m. Now, this is the general solution what is what is known here and what is what is unknown here. So, of course, the t is the time variable that is coming because of this differential equation. Omega is related to the uh, spring constant since I am discussing a particular uh, harmonic oscillator. So, therefore, I know the value of k the spring constant and also since I, I know the mass of the uh, uh, system that I am dealing with. So, these two quantities and therefore, omega they are defined by the problem at hand. What is unknown in this equation is that I have this a and b whose values I, I need to uh, determine. I can since I know the uh, this is the general solution of x, I can also write the general solution of the velocity which is the first time de derivative of x which will come out to be a omega cosine omega t plus uh, forgive me, this would be minus b omega sin omega t because when I differentiate this cosine function with respect to t, I would have a minus sign. 
minus b omega sin of sin omega t. So, I have now these two general definition of the speed and, and the position. I have now to discuss the boundary condition, the, uh, uh, the initial value condition if you remember when at time t equals 0. So, when I started my uh, exercise at time t equals 0 x at 0. So, I you I put t equal 0 in this equation. So, when I put the here, so this term becomes sin 0, so which is 0 and this term becomes 1 cos 0 is 1. So, therefore, x of 0 that means the position at time equal 0 is the value of b and I define that as x 0. x 0 is the equilibrium position or the starting position of, of the uh, of the system of the oscillator. So, I already have an idea about what is the value of b here, b is the initial position x 0. Now, I would apply the same uh, t equals 0 system uh, uh, situation for the speed. So, the speed v equals 0, if I put t equals 0 here, so I will get cosine 0 which will be 1. So, therefore, I have a omega and then when I put 0 here in, in this place. So, that this will give me a sine function which will be a 0 so, uh, which will be 0. So, therefore, I am left with v of 0 is a omega, but I know that the beginning the, the spring was at rest. So, therefore, the initial speed was 0. So, therefore, I will make this 0 and since omega is related to the spring constant and the mass of the uh, body. So, therefore, this is not 0 there in that the, that way I have a is 0. So, I now have an idea about what is the value of a and what is the value of b. Uh, let us use the knowledge that we, uh, we have now and define my x of t as a which is 0. So, therefore, this term vanishes b is x 0. So, x 0 cosine omega t. So, this is the general uh, definition of the, the position that I am getting for a classical harmonic oscillator. All right. And what about v? v at any time t will be given by when I apply. So, in this equation a is 0. So, this term vanishes. So, I am left with x 0 omega sorry there is a minus sign minus x 0 omega sin omega t. Now, uh, we will dis discuss what is the value of the kinetic energy. Since we already know the velocity or the speed, kinetic energy is half m v square. So, if I know v, I would simply use x 0 square omega square sin square omega t. This is my uh, the kinetic energy, but if you see omega is k over m under square root. So, omega square is going to be k over m. So, this m and the other m will cancel out and then I will be left with half k x 0 square sin square omega t. Now, what about the potential energy? The potential energy we know that force is the negative gradient of uh, since I am dealing with only uh, one variable. negative gradient of the uh, the potential energy is this force. So, therefore, uh, minus d v by d x where v is capital V is the potential energy d v by d x is force is minus k x. So, therefore, v or, or d v equals k x d x and when I integrate both side, I would get the potential energy as half k x square and what is x? I know x is, is given here. 
So, I get half k x 0 square cosine square omega t. So, now this is my potential energy of the harmonic oscillator and this is my kinetic energy of the harmonic oscillator. If you see the potential energy of this harmonic oscillator is a, is a square of a cosine function, the kinetic energy of this harmonic classical harmonic oscillator is a sine square function. If I add the kinetic energy and the potential energy, you would see that half k x square x 0 square sin square omega t and then cos square omega t. So, that the total energy E will be the kind sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, you would see that this comes out to be half k x 0 square. Now, this energy is independent of time. So, what do I see that I see that the potential energy and the kinetic energy will be an oscillatory function, but the sum of the energy is going to be constant. So, if I plot the results that I obtain here, so suppose this is my time axis and this is my energy axis, the, the, pot the potential and uh, the kinetic energy will be a sine, fun sine square function. So, um, this is the sine square function and then I my uh, this will be the kinetic energy and the potential energy is the square of a cosine function. So, now the sum of the two the kinetic energy and potential energy you will see that will be the when I take the sum this will turn out to be a, a constant. So, the thick line is your kinetic en energy which is a sin square function, the dashed line is a uh, is your potential energy which is a cosine square function and this constant line is your total energy. So, this is what we uh, know about the classical harmonic oscillator. Now, we would continue our discussion for the quantum mechanical treatment of this harmonic oscillator. Now, if you remember when we say that we, if we want to solve a problem quantum mechanically, we have to see you rem, we, if you remember the postulates of quantum mechanics, it says that everything that we need to know is there in the wave state function, the wave function and if we want to know but any in anything in particular about that system, we must use the operator corresponding to that, uh, that observable. Since we are interested here in this in this case to know or to learn more about the energy of this harmonic oscillator. So, therefore, what we would do is that we would start with the Hamiltonian of the quantum mechanical oscillator. So, we would write down the uh, Hamiltonian of the quantum mechanical uh, harmonic oscillator. So, Hamiltonian would have which is the operator for the energy has two components, one is the kinetic energy, other is the potential energy. The kinetic energy operator here is p square by 2 m. This hat if you remember is a, a way to signify uh, suggest that this is an operator. So, we know that a kinetic energy is momentum square divided by 2 m. So, moment we are using we are going to use the operator corresponding to the momentum operator here and we already have seen the potential energy V equals half k x square. We do that by using that the force is the negative uh, gradient of the potential energy. So, we have half k x square where x is the position operator and k is the spring constant. So, so the k uh, now we have we will come back to this definition. So, th this is the the two operators that I have in the Hamiltonian operator and to provide to obtain the general solution for this Hamiltonian. So, I have to write down the Schrodinger equation corresponding to, to do uh, corresponding to these two operators and solve the problem. In many textbooks you would find the quantum mechanical solution of this problem is, is uh, obtained by writing down the differential equation and then solving uh, going through the algebra and finding the solution. Uh, 
while that provides a rigorous way to treat the uh, harmonic oscillator through quantum mechanics, we will actually use a slightly different approach. This approach uh, will help us refresh our understanding of quantum mechanics by dealing with the terminologies that we have already defined. To do that, instead of solving this problem in, in, in terms of uh, the standard potential, uh, the momentum operator and the uh, position operator, what we do is that we will redefine this Hamiltonian in a slightly different way. So, before that, let us define two new operators. I call this operator A plus and I define this operator as beta by square root over 2 square root 2 and I define another operator A minus which is defined as Uh, the operators may appear uh, to begin with they may appear very uh, uh, very scary, but nothing to worry about them. You see I have defined only one new things that is beta. So, I define my beta as beta square equals m omega by h bar. So, I know the m which is the mass of the, the system omega is given by square root of k over m that we have already defined and h bar h bar is the Planck's constant h divided by 2 bar. So, this is this is just a constant for a. So, this is an universal constant and m omega are constant for a particular problem. So, therefore, beta square is, is, is a constant and beta is a constant. Now, if you leave aside beta then you see that there is a position operator and then there is momentum operator and these two operators we already know you see a slight uh, a, a somewhat different way of writing this operator which would uh, be clear when we uh, do a few more uh, steps of algebra. So, now we see that we have defined two operators a plus and a minus in terms of x and p. So, our Hamiltonian had p operator the momentum operator and the position operator, but instead now we have a plus and a minus two different operators which are expressed in terms of x and p. Of since they are uh, a plus and a minus are expressed in terms of x and p. So, I can of course, re-express my x and p in terms of a plus and a minus. If you see if I add this a plus and a minus operators the second term in this these brackets they will cancel out then I am then I will be left with only x uh, operator. So, this is what I uh, show you. So, the operator x is simply a minus operator plus a plus operator divided by square root of 2 beta. So, you can rearrange these two equations to obtain here. Similarly, I can write down operator p as a minus operator minus a plus operator divided by So, when I do a minus and a plus you would see that I will be cancelling out x operator and then I will be left with only uh, uh, p operator. So, this is what I would get for x and p. p. Now, if, if, you if, you, if you recall we started defining our Hamiltonian in terms of the momentum operator and the position operator. We, redef we defined two new operators a plus and a minus in terms of x and p and now we are selling that x we are also defining x and p in terms of a minus a plus. What is the advantage? The advantage is that now we will apply this use this x, x operator and p operator in this equation and rewrite this Hamiltonian, but in this case the Hamiltonian will be written down since we are up we are replacing x with a minus a plus and p with a minus a plus. So, therefore, the Hamiltonian will now if you rearrange it would come out to be
So, the, Hamil the Hamiltonian would be uh, expressed as uh, h bar omega a plus a minus operator plus plus half. This is very easy uh, uh, exercise to, to show and what we would do is that we will discuss in, uh, in the uh, next class as to how we can solve this Hamiltonian. So, what one uh, thing that we did is that instead of expressing uh, we started by expressing our Hamiltonian in terms of the position and momentum operator, but we converted this position and momentum operator in, in, in terms of two new operators a plus and a minus. In next class we will discuss also what are the significance of these operators, but one advantage is that what we obtained here is that we expressed now Hamiltonian in terms of this new operators a plus and a minus and what the solutions would come out of that will be discussed in the next class. Thank you for your attention.